Hey, hey, it's Michael. Welcome to another video. And this time, we can. I'm going to show you how to start using search functionality. And this is going to be the the first part. Yes, because it's a very large subject, so I decided to split this apart. So please, please uh, stay tuned because this also lesson could be a little bit, little bit longer than normal. All right, so before we're gonna actually jump and talk about the search functionality in Jira, why this is so, so, so important. Well, because in my opinion, search is like the most important element if you are a Scrum Master Manager, business analyst, or you know, product owner. Why? Because you need to know exactly what is going on inside your team. You need that visibility. And search is across everywhere in Jira. That includes boards, that includes dashboards, and yes, reports, the crucial part of Jira. All right, so in this video, by the end, basically, by the end of this video, you will be able to use the global and the basic search function. And I believe over here, yeah, you're gonna find a link to the part two, which I'm gonna talk about the GQL. And again, I will be using Jira Cloud. However, if you're using Jira Server, most of the steps are very, very similar. Obviously in the, in the Jira Server data center, the interface is a little different, but they're still pretty much similar. All right, let's do it <laughs> and jump to Jira Cloud. Okay, so as I told you, we will be using Jira Cloud, uh, but when you're using server, it's, it's very, very similar. But let's actually start from the basic functionality and we're gonna talk about how the search works in your, because there are like three levels. So the first level is the global one. The second level is for the filters, actually from the, we go from the project, which is the basic, uh, more precise when you can actually decide whatever you want, how many projects, how many statuses, how many types. And the third one is more advanced, which we're not going to talk this time. I, 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 I'm going to record a separate video about this uh, because it's actually more complex to that. And please, please, if you if you <laughs> want to consider subscribing to the channel, because it helps me a lot. Right. So let's actually explain the basic functionality of the search in a global way. So the global search is always located on the right hand side on the top menu. So if you navigate to the uh, search bar, just like really nice expanding. And now if for instance, I'm looking for a keyword called demo, it Jira is gonna provide me results in whole Jira. So every single ticket, boards, even people, yeah, even filters, which we're gonna talk about this. And on top of it, you can also search across Confluence. So you don't have to like just go to the chessboard switching to Confluence because you just need to switch to the second tab. And if you've like me, you've got a bit packet, why not? It is gonna search across everywhere, yeah? So yes, I am using, um, let's say, I don't use that much, that global functionality. However, yes, sometimes it is super, super uh, helpful because some, like, you know, sometimes some, someone is asking me for some specific keywords. So it's quicker, yeah, I'll just, just navigate to this top top bar, uh, put that name and it's gonna provide all the results. Or for instance, you know, like I don't know why, uh, sometimes people saying, hey, Mike, can you check NDD-3? So I'm just like putting over here, and I know, okay, yeah, I've got this plus, uh, it's gonna provide me the, the name of the board. And even even if, if there are some um, projects associated with that uh, ticket, so pretty cool. I also believe um, that the global search use the operators, like the Boolean stuff, like for instance, we can look at for demo plus mic. So I believe that plus is end. However, I do not actually use it. Why you're gonna you're gonna understand in a in a second, because there is way my way 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 more powerful uh, functionality to do that. So please, you know, again, do not just watch it. Please uh, implement that 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 knowledge into practice. It will help you a lot because this is only that one way how you can learn it. So have some fun with the search. But now let's actually explore the second part and. In my opinion, you're gonna spend more time, especially if you're a Scrum Master, believe me, if you're a Scrum Master or a manager or a business analyst, you're gonna use uh, that, that's that what we're gonna talk about right now, which is the issue navigator a lot, a lot. So how to do it? All right, so if we navigate to the project, I believe 
you already have some projects. If not, please watch my other uh, tutorials how to create your first project and how to um, how to, of course, you know, create few tickets because you need them. You need them. If, if you don't have anything, obviously, it's not going to work. So we're going to at the moment use uh, Kanban, but that's fine. If you've, if you've got only got um, Scrum, it's going to work absolutely the same way. So before we're going to actually start creating our first um, our first actually search query, uh, I'm going to explain how to do it in in just few words. So we navigate to the left hand side. You need to find that issues, and if you go to issues, you need to go if you want to if you want to display that list. The best one is to do it all issues. All right, and you should see something like this. Maybe, maybe, well, maybe it's going to look a little different. Maybe it's going to look like that. So exactly, let's actually start from the overview of this. Um, I personally believe it, it is actually called issue navigator because that's how it's called before. So um, yes, there is another one, the advanced, that like, yes, advanced issue navigator. However, I personally believe somehow Atlassian is going to merge it in together because I cannot really fully understand why is that advanced if we're going to switch to that. Yes, I believe maybe that even this is the issue navigator, but if we're going to use JQL, it's not going to use the coloring. So I'm going to actually stay over here. So let's very quickly overview this screen, what we have over here. Of course, you know, we still got our search uh, of the keyword, which we're going to use it in a second. But here, as I told you before, we have details view and issue view. So it's pretty cool because if you actually go to the details view, you're going to see what is inside on that left hand side, what is inside, like inside, what is actually a, what is part of the task. But most of the time, me and of course all their scrubbusters, I believe, use the list view. So this is actually how because sometimes people keep asking, me, "Oh my, I can't replicate it. Uh, my my um, my search navigator, however I call it, looks different." Yeah. So make sure you've got a list view, and also please make sure this time we're only going to focus on the basic functionality. JQL is the next next video, which is coming very soon. All right. So let's actually again have a fun with our demo word. I'm going to search it. And as you can see, something interesting happens over here because the, my project is already selected. Yeah. So look, if I'm going to actually select three more projects, of course, it's going to be more results, 14 tickets. But now we've got like full control. And, and I really, really like this functionality because you can build even sophisticated query in a matter of minutes. Look, I'm going to go now and use the type type, obviously, what this type, the type because the task may be story. And again, I'm going to select tasks and story. So obviously, because I've got mainly <laughs> stories, so it's reducing. So I've got 13, but maybe I would like to also have the status just to do. So you're going down. Wow. Great. Okay. Look, we've got five tickets. So in, like I said, just few clicks, you can build pretty much sophisticated query. And of course, you know, if you want to assign, you've got only one user, uh, why not? You can do it. I don't have any, nothing is assigned to me, but that's still absolutely fine. What about reporter? You can ask because there is no reporter over here. Well, there is, but little hidden. I'm going to show you in a second. So of course, what you can do at the moment you can save that filter and I'm highly encourage you actually to do that because well, if you save the filter you can also share it yes we will we'll have a we'll have a conversation about sharing it's actually pretty simple next time but well you can if you, if you want to if you want to explore it for yourself right now do it yes yeah? because you can actually do it with the project select the project and all roles and don't forget you can add but we're gonna we're gonna have this a little bit more about this in the in the in the next uh, in a calming video about the uh, advanced search functionality. Right, so now let's actually focus on um, fields which are not present on this actually top, top, top section. So what about the reporter? Of course, reporter is still here. However, you have to use the more. And if you click the more, look at this, there is more to that. However, not everything, please be aware that not every single custom field is going to be located because the list is pretty small, but if you actually start typing, so like I'm not going to start typing, like for instance, components, components actually are not here. This is a very good example. Why? 
Not sure why, but we can we can use advanced functionality next time, and I'm going to show you how to filter, um, how to create a filter based on the components. However, we're not going to talk about this right now. So let's select reporter. And of course, you know, I have a <laughs> only one user and assigned. And if I want to go narrow it down, we'll go for, for for current user. And there you go, ready. So again, you know, if you if you this is what you want. Don't forget to save it, yeah? All right, but let's actually explore something even more interesting. So I'm going to say nothing is selected because I would like to show you um, one pretty cool functionality regarding due date. Because unfortunately, the due date, again, well, not unfortunately, this is how that functionality works, is not going to be present over here on this on this top section however yes it is in a more so again look at this i've got this actually one or two examples like the project is ssb so i know it is ssb sample scrum project okay and i've got only two issues so i would like to i would like to see uh all tickets which got selected due date and due date is let's say more than two weeks all right, like how to do it. So again, we go for more. Start typing, maybe. The, the due date, I think, was on the list. Do you not do <laughs> due date. There you go. And I'm going to go for more than and weeks and say four update. And of course, you know, because it's more than four. But at the moment, Jira is going to provide the results for those two tickets. Look how cool it is. And again, if I want to save it, I will press the save button and later I can utilize that functionality. Right. So please also do not forget that you can always change the view. So now it's actually a good time. So we're going to explore it. Still two results. But if you're looking for a little bit more information, you're going to find them on that right hand side. But what about, let's actually go back a little bit to the. All right. So it looks like our filter works pretty OK. But now let's explore something else, because what is going to happen, for instance, if one of the results which we're looking for is not located on our grid, as I call it grid. Yes, of course, you can always go to the details view. And for instance, I don't know, we're looking for label. Yeah, so like we've got sample space, whatever, it doesn't really matter, yeah? So what if I would like to add that labels to this grid? Again, it's a pretty simple operation. You have to navigate to this, as we call it, meatballs. And I believe you need to find just the labels, okay? Let's update. So looks like our filter works pretty great. However, with, there is one little issue with this view and we're going to explore the advanced search because look, for example, I would like to add to this grid, as we call it, extra result, which is, for example, whatever, it doesn't really matter too much, it's going to be a label. So of course, you know, I can always switch the details view. And if I click on the left hand side, you're going to see the labels located on that right hand side, which is associated with that issue. But what about that list view? Can we add it right here? So I believe, unfortunately, I've done the research and I believe it, it, it is not that simple to add it to this view. That's why we're going to use advanced search. And don't worry, it's absolutely going to be fine because it is look it is looking very, very similar. So if I hit that advanced, What's happened? The view is a little bit changed. However, we can modify columns right now. So if I am looking for labels, labels, select, done. And as you can see, it has been added to this view. So in that, that case, this is how you're going to modify it. And you need to find that right balance, what works for you. But I'm highly encourage you to use like this basic functionality built into the project. But anytime you can always switch to advanced, well, to advance this view because it's not advanced. It's a little confusing. We're not switching to JQL still, but it's like this advanced kind of um, screen. 
And as I said, I kind of believe Atlassian is going to merge it somehow in the future. By the way, you can directly go to this to this actually screen using filters, advanced issue search. So that is the same thing. Again, you know, we're going to go for the basics, so like select whatever project we want, you know, type. Everything is absolutely the same. However, you can modify this screen. Right, so I'm going to finish over here. Thank you very much for watching. But don't go anywhere, because I believe in this section, you're going to find part two, when I'm going to show you about the GQL, how to very quickly uh, move from the basic function to, to more advanced. Plus, I've got a little surprise to you. Uh, in the description, you're going to find a link how to download this document, how to start, and also you're going to find additional resources in the description. So thank you very much, and I hope to see you very soon in that next video.